Hello, and welcome to another episode of Fishing with Ashley. If you're new here, my name is Ashley, and I'm the Field Application Specialist with Empire Genomics. So today we're going to dig into fish washing and some lab hacks related to fish washing. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So why is the wash step so important? And what I want to start with is that I still get so many labs having difficulty with cell background and washing, and I get a lot of questions as to how to wash properly and what solutions are the best to wash with. So I wanted to put this little webinar together just to cover each step of washing and some hacks involved with fish washing to help you guys out. So washing slides after denaturation and hybridization removes unbound probe from the slides. If the unbound probe remains on the slide, it can hinder analyzing of cells due to unwanted probe background. So inadequate washing and poorly maintained wash solutions continue to be an issue in fish testing and understanding how to properly wash slides can save a lab a lot of time and money. So let's review the wash protocol. So step one is after your incubation period, you wanna carefully remove rubber cement and cover slips and proceed to the wash steps. Step two is gonna be your hot wash or your warm wash. This is 0.3% IGAPAL or NP40, which is the detergent, and 0.4X SSC at 73 degrees Celsius for two minutes. And you wanna agitate vigorously for the first 10 to 15 seconds. Step two is gonna be your room temperature wash, and this is 0.1% IGAPAL or NP40 and 2X SSC at room temperature for two minutes. And again, you wanna agitate vigorously for the first 10 to 15 seconds. And finally, you wanna wipe off the back of the slide to dry it and allow the rest, of the, the rest of the slide to fully dry in the dark. I usually like to place the slide standing upright on a paper towel in a nearby drawer, and I keep the drawer closed so that there's no light exposure to the slides because dyes can photo bleach and that can cause fading of your signals. So some labs like to keep them in drawers, other labs that process a lot usually keep them in slide flats that keep them in the dark and that works well too. So after you do that and the slide is fully dried, you're gonna counter stain with DAPI with antifade, again, to prevent fading of the probe signals. And you're gonna cover slip with a 22 by 50 mm cover slip. Then of course, allow the slide to sit in the dark for another 15 or 20 minutes before viewing on a scope. This is gonna allow the DAPI to adequately counter stain the cells. So let's go over a fish hack for step number one, which is removal of the rubber cement and cover slip. So this is important because you don't wanna be rough during this process. If you're rough, you can smush or remove cells while removing the cover slip. Sometimes we think we're super gentle, but our fingers are a little bit more rough on the slide than they need to be. And you can press down on the cover slip and rub the cover slip off because they really stick to the slide well. Um, you can use a wooden applicator stick to remove the rubber cement and the cover slip. The use of the wooden applicator stick is really helpful. You just need to gently roll it over the rubber cement and the cement sticks really well to the stick and it also gently removes the cover slip. So you'll just gently roll it back and forth over the rubber cement and it should stick to it immediately. And you can just use one stick for all of your slides. You don't need to use one stick per slide. It kind of forms into a big rubber cement lollipop in a sense. You can use one stick, for 20 different slides and remove all of your rubber cement and cover slips. So a little review and tips for steps two and three, and this is the actual washing process. The big thing here is to make sure that your hot wash is actually getting to the proper temperature, which is 73 degrees Celsius prior to washing the slides. So you wanna make sure that you place your thermometer into the Copeland jar or the slide rack or well to make sure that the temperature within the jar is at 73 degrees Celsius. If the thermometer is outside of the jar, it may say that the fluid is 73 degrees Celsius, but the temperature of the solution within the jar or the well may be lower than that, and you're not gonna get a really good wash. So again, measure the temperature from within the slide holder to ensure the temperature of the slides are exposed to the appropriate temperature. So the big thing here also is agitation. Agitation is key. 
You want to be sure to agitate the slides in the wash for 10 to 15 seconds upon placing them in the solution. And we've attached this video here kind of showing what we mean by agitating. You can see that the text starts the timer and you have the slide rack within the well and he's just moving it up and down to really get the solution to slosh against the slides and wash away any unbound probe that is there. So here's some examples of wash containers that you can use. I placed three here. You have the plastic slide wells that have a plastic slide rack, and then there's the glass Copeland jar. Now, of course, the Copeland jar can only hold five slides at a time, so that can be a hindrance for some labs, depending on the volume of slides that you're running. I tend to go for the plastic wells with the plastic rack. These tend to keep my slides safer, and they keep them from breaking, which I really like. It also makes it very easy to agitate the slides within the wells and really get the solution moving on the slides to wash away background. You can do this in a Copeland jar, but it often leads to chipping and breaking of the slide because of the glass on glass contact. So you just have to be very, very careful with the glass Copeland jars, but you can absolutely use them. And this is completely your preference. Moving on to concocting the perfect wash solution. So you wanna always have 20X SSC on hand, and this can be diluted for 2X SSC and 0.4X SSC. Some labs choose to purchase pre-diluted SSC, and this is perfectly fine too. That's totally up to you. I've also put together two formulas here for two liters of each wash solution, the warm wash and the room temperature wash or wash one and wash, wash two, whatever you wanna call them. For two liters of our 73 degrees Celsius wash, we have the 0.3 Igapal and the 0.4 XS SSC. Our personal recipe is 1,956 mils of DH2O plus 40 mils of 20X SSC, and then six mils of the Igapal, which is your detergent. And then for the room temperature wash, we have 1,798 mils of DH2O plus 200 mils of 20X SSC, and then we add our two mils of Igapal, and we typically do it in that order because the Igapal detergent tends to be very thick and NP40s tend to be very thick. I found that the best way to add these wash detergents to the jars is to use an automatic pipetter and draw the amount of detergent that you need. For our case, it's six or two mils. And then you wanna rinse out the pipette with the solution within the jar to get all of the detergent out of the pipette. So you'll draw up the solution and re release it back into the container repeatedly to rinse all the detergent in the pipette because you'll find that the solution is so thick, it can leave a good remainder of it in the pipette. One to two mils of it may be left behind and then you're not getting all of the detergent within the solution, and then your wash solution isn't gonna be stringent enough to get rid of your background. So you really wanna make sure that you're rinsing out the pipette after you put the detergent into the solution to really get all of that thick, soapy detergent out of the pipette. So it's important to note here that these are not the only wash formulas. Some involve different detergents, but the point is that you have to be sure your dilutions are appropriate for whatever solutions you're using, because if the wash is too strong, it's gonna remove probe signal, and if it's too weak, you're gonna have some background on the slide. And both of the solutions that I've posted there have a six month expiration date, and most wash sol solutions tend to have the same. So you can store it at room temperature, of course, with a cap on it and discard it after six months but it is important to take note of the quality of the solution prior to using it. So if the solution looks cloudy or contaminated, maybe there's some weird floating stuff inside of it that you're unsure of, just discard it immediately and make a fresh solution because it would be really awful to lose a whole batch of slides due to a poor wash solution. So here's some fish wash tips. You always wanna be sure to check the pH of your wash solutions. I get this question all the time. Should I pH check my wash solution? And the answer is yes. You wanna make sure the wash solution is between seven and 7.5 and use NaOH or HCl to adjust it if necessary, because if a solution is too acidic or too basic, it can really affect the cell morphology. 
Another thing that's really important is changing your wash solutions regularly depending on the volume of slides processed. So my rule of thumb is to change it, the solutions at least once a week. Um, if you're a very high volume lab and you're running a lot of slides daily, you might wanna change it once a day. Uh, if you run a little bit less, you change it once a week. This is really dependent on your lab because changing the wash solution is so important because there can be debris and unbound probe that's just sitting in that solution. And if you're washing your slides in that dirty solution, you're not gonna have clean slides and it may hinder your signals when it comes to analyzing. So finally, how do I know if I have a wash issue? So I have two pictures here on the right that show some background within cells. In these images, you can see fluorescence within and outside the cells. Some technicians may see spots within the cell that look like an extra signal, but it's more likely that the lab is seeing a background issue. So if you see these issues, you may wanna consider a higher stringency wash or maybe agitating more to remove unbound probe. You also want to make sure that your wash solutions are made correctly and they're not contaminated, or you might just want to make a fresh wash solution for the next batch of slides. You also want to be sure you're checking your hot wash temperature again within the container that the wash is in to ensure it's getting to the appropriate temperature prior to washing. So some labs run slides through an ethanol series, 70%, 85%, and 100% prior to washing to remove background even further. Um, this can work and it has been helpful in some labs, but this should really be a last resort after troubleshooting through everything. You know, you want to make sure the probe company is checking the probe on their end. You want to make sure that you're checking all of your wash solutions, making a fresh batch of wash solution, checking the pH of the solutions, doing all those necessary troubleshooting type of things to make sure that your wash is good. Um, and if you still have background issues, then maybe try an ethanol series afterwards because you just don't want to use more reagents and consume more time than necessary.